creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much for joining me today for Creative Living. We're going to learn how to make a very professional looking floral bouquet. We'll show how to make some fabulous frames and talk about using chia seeds in a paleo diet. One of my guests today is Carly Cylinder and she's a floral designer from Brooklyn, New York. Carly's going to show how to use flowers from a simple wrapped bouquet to create an easy arrangement. This is called the spiraling method. Her business is called Flower LA and Flower LA Junior. Another guest is Shannon Bilkey, and she's a designer and crafter from Payson, Arizona. Shannon's going to show us how to make fabulous frames using scrapbook paper and lots of embellishments. Her business is Shea and & Company. And my first guest is a cookbook author and registered dietitian. Carol Finster will talk about the paleo diet and explain what it consists of, as well as the pros and cons. Then she'll demonstrate how to use chia seeds, which are high in omega-3, in some recipes. Her company is Savory Palette, and she's from Centennial, Colorado. Carol, it's really nice to have you here. Years ago, when you made your first appearance here, I was so excited to talk to you about the gluten-free diet. Oh. And I think about all of the diets that have come along since then, and there's pros and cons of all of them, I realize. But now the one that seems to really be in the forefront is one called a paleo diet. It is. It's short for Paleolithic, and I get a lot of questions about it, too. I bet you do. It basically says this, that we should be eating the way Paleolithic man and woman did, which is a long, long time ago. And they basically ate only fresh meats, such as the pork chop, eggs, vegetables, um, berries, fruits, nuts, mushrooms. Anything that was pure and fresh and unadulterated was, was acceptable. And that was growing wherever they yeah, happened wherever to be Wherever they living. happened to be, uh -huh. exactly. And it also rules out any alcohol or coffee or mm. sugar or any processed um, foods. And the only oils that are allowed would be olive, coconut, and... Um, um, avocado oil, avocado which is hard to be, find. It's uh -huh. hard to find. It's a uh -huh. little expensive, too. So that's what the proponents say we should be eating this diet because mm -hmm. for our health and we should mm -hmm. live like early man did. The critics, on the other hand, say, wait a minute, you have left out three critical food groups. One is dairy, mm -hmm. one is whole grains, which are, are really important, and the other is legumes and beans. And so any diet that leaves out a whole set of food groups cannot be really uh, mm -hmm. the best for you. And after all, we as man have evolved beyond that fairly simplistic uh -huh. diet. And truly, we can't even think about eating the things that they had then because of all of the technology and the equipment exactly. and processing exactly. that has taken place. Exactly. Uh -huh. And uh, it can be a challenging diet if you want to adopt it when you are also on some other diet, such as a gluten-free diet as I am. But the part that probably um, disturbs me the most and I find hardest is I love whole grains. And so mm -hmm. if I wanted to be on a paleo diet, what would I do? Uh -huh. um, well, I like dairy foods. And dairy. And you, so you that's would not miss, allowed either. No, you would miss the cheeses. And I uh -huh. think beans are especially important for the gluten-free diet mm -hmm. because they provide the, the essential B vitamins that we give the up. The protein. And uh -huh. the protein when we stop eating fortified wheat products. Mm -hmm. So anyway. But it's interesting to, to read and I yeah. really like knowing the pros and cons. I and, do too. And, uh, I do too. And there's an abundance of food here that you can eat, uh -huh. but it's just that this is what you will eat. This you is won't it. have uh -huh. all these other foods. So <laughs> since we can't have whole grains, what I thought we could talk about is a way to get seeds into your diet as oh. opposed to whole grains. And that brings us to chia seeds. Which I had never even heard of cooking with. No, I know. We, we think of the little animals uh -huh. at, at, ch -ch -ch -chia uh -huh. at, at the holidays. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is what it looks like in the bag. Mm -hmm. There are basically two colors. One is a lighter color. Sometimes you'll see that under the name of Salba, S-A-L-B-A. -A. It looks like Salba to me, but it was sold as They're chia. Tiny. They're tiny. They're very tiny. And this is the darker version. Now, these, in the, the Mayan language, the word chia, which is spelled C-H-I-A, means strength. Oh. And in the Aztec warrior times, they would eat this because it gave them strength and stamina. 
For battles or whatever. For battle, uh -huh. yeah. Th those are each about one tablespoon. One tablespoon alone has a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, uh -huh. but also um, five grams of fiber and three grams of protein. So that's a lot. Oh, uh -huh. That's a lot in one in one. Would little they just bite. eat it like that? Would they put it well, in water? Well, I don't know or? that we know. <laughs> I, uh, if they ate it in water, or if they used it with water, here's the interesting thing. It absorbs nine to ten times its oh. own weight in water. So you could get by with eating not very much mm -hmm. as long as you drank Would water be very because filling. it swells up. Uh -huh. And I wanted to show you something that you can make with chia called the chia pudding. I've, and that's a new one for it's, me it's too. That's one. what this that's is. That's what that is. So it is so simple to make. Uh -huh. I've already put the um, chia seeds in a wide mouth jar. I'm sure. Is paleo, that about a tablespoon? It's a tablespoon. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Paleo man did not have probably wide mouth have. jars. <laughs> okay. He probably also didn't have the measuring the, cup. No. Um, <laughs> This is um, almond milk, which is allowed on the diet because, even though it's a highly processed food, allowed the because nuts, it's is nuts, it? uh -huh. right. And I like using these little wide mouth jars because all you have to do, you can eat right out of them too. Oh, yeah. They're like great. a little mini blender. They're like little they? mini blenders and uh -huh. I'm shaking it. Now what's happening right away is these seeds are starting to soak up the, the milk. You said nine to 10 times. Yeah, wow. nine to 10 times. So. I'm just shaking it to make sure the seeds get distributed because mm -hmm. those little seeds like each other and they clump up together. And so, and I'm sure early man did not have agave nectar, but they probably would have used honey. We're using agave just because if you're putting um, honey, cold honey, honey into cold milk, let me add some vinegar, some uh, vanilla too. Um, it'll clump up, so I'd use agave, oh, but if you uh -huh. wanted to heat it, you could heat this up and make it hot too. So a little bit of flavoring makes mm -hmm. it taste good. And then you shake it. And what I like to do is, um, for about the next couple of hours, um, put it in the refrigerator, because I assume you wanted it cold with, uh -huh. to, with to preserve it overnight. It. With mm -hmm. milk. Um, every few half hours, so walk by and shake it, because those little chia seeds are absorbing moisture. And within a half hour or so, they will start to thicken uh -huh. this pudding, as I call it. This reminds me of years ago as a child when we made ice cream. Yes. And yes. we would either crank it or I exactly. had a guest that showed rolling the can yeah. back and forth. So it's sort of the same concept. Same concept. And uh -huh. so leave it overnight. I made one last night, and, and it can be eaten the next morning for mm -hmm. breakfast if you want it hot, simply That's heated. Uh -huh. That is just simply poured into a wine glass because it's a little bit pretty. You could put it into a cereal bowl. You could heat it up. You could dress it just like you might dress hot cereal, you know, cinnamon. Um, paleo man mm -hmm. might not have used cinnamon. And but raisins. And raisins. You mm -hmm. can, you know, it's, it's a healthy food for anyone, no matter what diet you're on. And it, it's extraordinarily nutritious, and it's not that hard to make. And uh -huh. it's really fairly unprocessed, given what we put into it. Wow. Well, I've heard of the diet, and I, I tried to read before you came. I tried to read as much as I could about it. But, um, I, you know, I still go back to what I learned when I was majoring in home ec. Moderation is the key to everything. Moderation, moderation, moderation. So mm -hmm. this will work on any diet, and just keep in mind that it's high fiber, and so if you're just initially adopting some high fiber foods, you might want to take it easy. I That'll be the, fun to experiment with yeah. it anyway. Oh yeah, I've never heard different of Different flavors. I, I would put chocolate in, it, in mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'd put whipped cream on top. Whipped cream, a little bit of yogurt, and uh -huh. it would be perfect. Well, great. Well, thank you very much, Carol. This is really interesting. Thank you. Shannon, it's always nice to have you here, and I find out what you're doing um, in Thank your, you. quote, spare time. Yeah. And as a mixed media artist, you really do make use of every little bit and piece that you have on hand, don't you? I do. I'm Maybe I'm cheap or a spendthrift, but <laughs> I find my favorite things, and I can't get rid of them, and so I use them eventually for something. And people make fun of me because I have a big stash of lots of different things, mm -hmm. but I always end up using them. Well, and we were talking about those little cheap frames that you can find either at a flea market or something like right. that or even go pay the full price of a dollar at right. one of the dollar stores right and to frame something uh, in this case your daughter and and uh, my new grandbaby baby. but this was just a little cheap frame that you started with right that was an inexpensive frame and what I found was I like when I take my favorite pictures 
I like to make them more than just framed. Uh -huh. So I like to make a specialized frame that ends up making, personally, I think, my picture a piece of art work. Well, it certainly and is. And this is my beautiful daughter and her little baby girl, Fiona May. Uh -huh. And I took the inexpensive frame. You take a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. You turn it over, and it's easier to use the lighter weight paper. Oh, right. Some of it's a, more of a card stock. Right, so and, and you can use that, but you have to fold it first. Oh, okay. But this, you would draw a line in the middle. You would leave the same size border all mm -hmm. the way around. Mm -hmm. And what you do is then you cut a small box out of the middle mm -hmm. here, cut diagonals, and Mod Podge, my go-to glue medium, you just fold it up, uh -huh. glue it down from side to side from the center, then you do the outsides and to make these nice clean corners because you need nice clean corners oh. you cut it diagonally across the top here and you do one side and then you fold it in and it's then, not a mitered corner is it no it's, I don't miter uh -huh. I just this is mitered here just to fold sure. it up uh -huh. but here it isn't I just cut this cut an off angle. and okay. then fold it in here and then that flat folds over the mm -hmm. top there and that's what you did this is actually right. Right. Yeah, that's a really inexpensive frame. In fact, it was broken and it's staying together because, because of the paper. Because of the paper. Yeah. <laughs> and then you went back and added some antiquing. Right. And, like. and originally I was going to use it for that, but I didn't think this coloring went with that picture, mm -hmm. so I didn't use it. And then did you make all of these embellishments? That was a piece of paper. That was one of those papers that I bought because it was beautiful and I didn't know what I was going to do with it uh -huh. in my stash that everybody laughs at. <laughs> and I fussy cut all the pieces out. Uh -huh. I fussy cut these pieces, then I backed this set with those little foam squares foam that squares. are about an eighth uh -huh. of an inch, and then added a few pretty little embellishments, and I always love the metal pieces, so I put a little bit of a, a metal piece, and that was in my stash too. And having that three-dimensional addition to, right. a, to a frame really does change the looks of it completely. And then I think one last thing I might add is a little bit of it's a sheer sage green ribbon on there. But then when you hang mm. that on the wall, it looks more like a piece of art, uh -huh. not just a picture. Well, and what a great way to, you know, we always change out our kids' school pictures. Right. You go each grade, they change um, and how they look and maybe right. the color they're wearing or whatever. This would be a great idea with some just some inexpensive scrapbook paper. Right, and then you can take the paper and fussy cut. You take oh, the paper, uh -huh. use it, and then fussy cut the little pieces out mm -hmm. that you the birds want. birds and the flowers. And their embellishments that you put on your frame. Uh -huh. You can then ink them and embellish them or just emboss them. You can do a lot with just changing them out just a little to make each piece look unique, but all the pieces go together mm -hmm. to complement. That was what I was trying to do, the picture of the beautiful baby. Of course. <laughs> and I can daughter, tell of which course. One. Yes, and the daughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so many of the scrapbook papers are two sided. Right. So it even gives you, you could color, let this be the frame. Right. And then, cut and then out you the have enough room cut. to fussy uh -huh. cut the little pieces. Great yes. idea. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you showing us how easy well, it is to it make is. It's a very and... simple concept that I had, and I'm going to be teaching it in my scrapbook store because it's, it's such a simple concept. People uh -huh. are going, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I do First that? First thing I've ever thought of that somebody else said, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> well, good luck. I think <laughs> it'll go over well. And congratulations on the baby. Oh, thank you. <laughs>
um, sturdier and mm -hmm. you can really get a nice round shape. But if you're using wildflowers, you can oh. mix it and have it have more of a wild kind of uh -huh. natural look. Okay. Yeah. And a little, I guess, do you call Greens. this? Greens. That's right, ruscus. Okay. Um, it's a very trendy green right now. It's Israeli ruscus. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, so you can use just whatever you like, really. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and do we need these twigs? Is that what we're okay, so <laughs> going to use? Um, if you are not making a bridal bouquet and you're using it for an arrangement, you can just cut it and we'll stick it in here after. Uh -huh. A lot of times I'll just, I've just got a canister that uh -huh. you can just get out of your kitchen. You could use any kind of vase or a pitcher, whatever you have on hand. Um, this is Curly Willow and I like to have this on hand because it kind of spruces up arrangements. And I'm just gonna wrap it around oh. my hand, stick it in just to add something to it. You could also oh, use- you're using it to go in. I I'm thought using for some it reason go you were gonna weave around them now. You I could understand. do that. Actually, oh, you, you could. could. Yeah, let's do that. So oh, I'll, okay. I'll save some for that. That's a good okay. idea. Yeah, I mean, you could do anything with these. Um, so. And it doesn't break easily. I mean, Well, these are fresh. Have, if, oh. if you had these on hand, um, you could run it under hot water and it would make it more pliable. Oh, so it's kind of a tip. good thing to uh -huh. have. Yeah. I so see a lot of wreaths made with those. With the curly oil. Uh -huh. I mean, you could do, anything with this. Hmm. So you could use, you know, rocks from outside, pebbles, whatever you want, yep. shells, whatever you have on hand, you could stick it inside your vase. And this is kind of my makeshift vase today. Mm -hmm. I don't mind if it's sticking out like that. So mm -hmm. that is okay. that. And Good. then to spiral. Um, so the thing when you use this method is you kind of have to work fast and you're not going to get a shape until you have about six to eight flowers. Oh, um, so okay. you're going to stick one. Are you right handed? Right handed. Left -handed? Mm -hmm. I guess it doesn't matter. But okay, so I'm going to stick it in my left hand and kind of go like that to create a little bit of a holder. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people, what they do is they'll go like this, uh -huh. and that's wrong. So you want to kind of keep it loose. Oh, oh, okay. And then I'm going to take the next flower, and I'm going to overlap it on a diagonal, going oh. like that. Okay. And continue on. So I'm just going to add forth. it in. Oh, it's going to keep going. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Uh -huh. This is why when you have just a few flowers, it's hard to get any kind of shape. So uh -huh. um, once you start building it, you'll start to see something. Huh. So I'm gonna add the next one around, and it doesn't really matter where it's going. I could add it over here or over here, just that it's going the same way. Oh, this one needs to be cleaned. Oh, so okay. yeah, we'll deal with that one later. I missed one. No, that's okay. I'm gonna add it in. Now, a lot of times when you see these videos, they're gonna tell you to turn it almost every time. Uh -huh. And what happens is it kind of starts to fall apart. So I turn it only maybe two or three times. Oh, okay. And the reason that I'm putting them in in the same direction is well, when I press all close, it's gonna kind of go down really easily. Oh, the stems. The stems. Okay. But if mm -hmm. I was going like this on the opposite way, mm -hmm. and I went like that, it would start to break the oh, others. okay, so go so the same way. Go the same way. And you're holding it up close to the I flower. Am. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have more so control it, my that My hands, way. it's kind of just like a holder. Yeah. For it. So uh -huh. I'm gonna add it in. And then you'll get really fast at this oh, too. Oh yeah, so I I'm, can see how it would. Yeah. And then I kind of start to see where there's a hole. So I can see right here uh -huh. there's a hole. And then maybe I'll give it a little twist just to add it in. The flowers are gonna kind of drop down and you just have to fix it later. Oh. A lot with floral design is just, I always say just get it done and then go back and fix it. Okay. Because a lot of times people are just so concerned with uh -huh. every single flower. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, just, just do it. Especially when we are working on events, I'm like, just get it done. Oh you know? yeah. <laughs> so you and can for see, some reason with flowers, they always look beautiful. Yeah, right. So. That's true. So you can see it uh -huh. actually is that starting to get a uh -huh. shape. And if you're working with someone, you can ask them, is there a hole? If you're mm -hmm. working alone, sometimes it's really hard to see what you're doing. Uh -huh. So what you should do is stand in front of a mirror and just go like that, oh, and sure. you can kind Good of see idea. how the shape's going. Uh -huh. So this is obviously a very traditional, elegant uh, bouquet. Mm -hmm. And, it and you can't ever on. go wrong, wrong with roses. And yellow roses. Especially yellow. Yes, especially. <laughs> I'm so glad I got these. So this is about 25 roses, and it is good for a six inch vase. Um, when you buy it wholesale, they come in 25s. If you're buying it from a market, oh, really? you probably would need two bunches mm -hmm. or so. So that actually starting to look That's pretty beautiful. good. It does look like a, a, a wedding bouquet, yes. I can see. And this uh -huh. is a good design, even if we're using it in a vase for someone that is a little bit more type A or really likes <laughs> things very structured, uh -huh. they would like this kind of arrangement. I already like it. <laughs> So then, if I'm working with a smaller flower, these are spray roses, but if I was working with ranunculus, do you know what those are? No. They're little round flowers that kind of look like roses. Uh -huh. Or anything really delicate like freesia, um, mm -hmm. sweet peas, anything like that. What I do is I 
thread it through. And the reason I do that oh. is when you're spiraling, it's really hard to get a pattern, the exact pattern you want by doing that. Uh -huh. So in order to get the exact placement, I will just find where, whichever space. Where, uh -huh. where you want to start. Where I want to start, and then I just uh -huh. pull it through huh. like that. Mm -hmm. And that way you can get the design that you want. Same wow. with greens. I tend to use minimal greens in my work. Oh. So I like to add it in after, and I'm just stripping it down uh -huh. like rosemary, like we did with some other flowers. And again, I'm going to kind of pull it through. And I see why holding your hand slightly loose, if it was too tight, you couldn't yes. get anything to go in. And also, I mean, they are flowers, and so <laughs> they will snap. And you do not want to hear that sound. And your floor <laughs> set is the worst sound you could hear. Oh, I see. Yeah, so just being kind of gentle, and um, I'll let you... Pull it through, maybe like from maybe. here up. Oh, you okay. Really kind of wasteful a little bit of this, but it's all right. Okay, so then you would just kind of stick it wherever. Going, and then there it, there is. it is. Yank it through, keep on going. Oh. You can kind of go like that. Sometimes with leaves, I'll just. And you just pull and yeah, arrange you can kind them. Yeah, uh -huh. fuss it. So once we're done with that, or should we continue and, on? Or? And how many, you said that was 25 or This 24. is about 25. So yeah. how many of the secondary color would you typically put in? Just what it's, looks good? It's whatever you want. So if you oh. want something more modern, you should keep the flowers together. So I would put oh. maybe a grouping of three sticking to the odd number. And sometimes I like oh. to leave it just like this, almost like it was a brooch and a hair. Or, just kind of like have a focal point off to the oh, side. I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have thought about doing that. So you'd have the grouping. Yes, mm -hmm. this is, it's called okay. blocking, or I, that's what I call it anyway. Uh -huh. And um, in a lot of designs that you want super modern, um, you would use this. Uh -huh. If you wanted it a little bit more romantic, you well, could. It's very elegant. There. Uh -huh. So something like that. Actually, it's pretty. It is. It's like <laughs> so then how do you put it? Okay, so we are going to tie it together. Tie it. Um, these okay. are pretty long. Sometimes I'll cut it short if I'm working with it mm -hmm. too. But you can use a hairband. Sometimes I'll use a oh, clear mm -hmm. hairband because uh -huh. it's really easy. You can use tape. Um, we can use the curly willow around it. So I'll mm. have you hold it. You kind of do need two people. I mean, mm -hmm. if you get really good, you can do it by yourself. But it is easier. Or you could if you were by yourself and... yeah. You had all of your tools at right with yes, you. Yes, but I have you here. That's right. I'm trying to be helpful. Yes. So this is clear tape. Normally, if I was using green floral tape or something like that, I would cover it with a ribbon oh, and just uh -huh. secure it, um, either tying it in a knot or with a corsage uh -huh. pin, something like that. And then what I do for the vase that I'm using is I will measure it against it to see where to cut. I remember learning that tip, and you I, did? I, that is so that's such an easy tip. Yes, it, it kind of applies to when if you were just arranging it uh -huh. kind of like that, you mm -hmm. would measure the first one, see the height, and then use that as the guide for everything else, yeah. so that you don't have to keep doing it. Keep doing it. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then with flowers, it's like hair or fashion. You want to veer on the longer side because you can always cut it shorter. Cut it shorter. Yeah. <laughs> And for these, yeah. um, you are supposed to cut it on diagonal to, well, let me get a good measure on this. So something like that. <clears throat> You're supposed to cut on diagonal so mm -hmm. that it creates more surface and space. more water can go exactly. in. Exactly. If I was it? doing this for an actual bridal bouquet, I would just cut it straight. Oh. You know, just to have it clean. Hmm. There we go. And I'll just kind of put it in there. So I have to cut it a little bit shorter. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the curly willow actually kind of conceals the tape, so... I think everyone would be looking at the top. Yeah. The flowers. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go like that. This is called a spiral. This and, is and how you spiral it. Uh -huh, that's the way you made it. That yeah. is just beautiful. I can and I that think was pretty we quick, can all too. do that. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's, it's cute in this canister, actually. Uh -huh, and it is. I like it being yeah. clear. It's a little bit country. Well, thank you so much for showing you're us welcome. how easy it is to make that. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to use stamps on velvet fabric. We'll share some cabinet designs for a mudroom and learn to make a growth chart for our kids. One of my next guests is a mixed media artist and designer, and she's going to show how to make a beautiful velvet stamped photo album. Another guest will talk about mudroom design. Many homeowners combine their mudroom with their current laundry room, and with the right cabinetry and organization solutions, homeowners can make the most of their space. And finally, another guest is going to show how to use an oversized wooden ruler to make a growth chart to mark the height milestones as your child grows. 
All of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at enmu.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window, type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer you a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6900 series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this new booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or on any of the other booklets that we have available online. We also would like to invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just go to kenw.org and click on the Sign Up Now button. Thank you.